The new Gemini 3 model by Google dropped yesterday and there's been a lot of hype around how powerful it is. It turns out it's especially strong at generating UI designs and it's definitely a step up from other leading models like Claude and designs just don't look like AI slop anymore. So in this video, I'm going to put it to the test inside my AI design app uh, called Composal and we'll just see how well it can create real screens, layouts and components and we'll try out different prompts, stress test the design quality and just see how far we can push its design abilities. Let's dive in. Okay, I'm inside the newly branded Composal app here, formerly called Copy Coder. And um, first thing I'll do is go here into settings and then go to model settings. And here I can actually change it from our default was Claude Sonne 4.5. And now you can just switch it over to Gemini. And what this essentially does is it saves your settings. And now when I create a new project, uh, let's call it uh, Gemini demo. And uh, I switch on design max. This is then when it uses the Gemini 3 model. Okay, so let's start off with uh, something where it can really show off its uh, design capabilities. We'll start off with a landing page and I've prepared a prompt here. I'll just copy it over. So it says design a modern SaaS landing page for an AI automation platform, include a gradient hero with product screenshot, blah, 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 blah. So, so a couple of other things. Um, it's not uh, a super large prompt, um, but it's also not just like a one-liner. So let's see how it does and we'll switch over to the marketing mode here and then generate this. While that is generating, I'm actually going to just generate another one in parallel. I'll copy over this other prompt and this one is a bit more, not like a SaaS landing page, but like artistic portfolio landing page for a digital designer, okay? We'll see if that kind of differs a bit because obviously the design style is going to be different. So let's generate that too. And then we'll just wait for both of them to finish. Okay, they're done generating. Let's have a look at this first one here. Okay, this does look really good. Um, actually, we can open it up in full screen here to see it. It's like you can still see some, um, you know, properties that uh, Sonnet also had. So this like a little bit of AI slop style on this one, maybe because it's a SaaS, it was the SaaS landing page prompt, but it does look a bit higher quality than um, what I'm used to seeing. So for example, this part here where it's showing this like screenshot of a dashboard looks really high quality. I haven't seen it done this well by AI before. This part, I guess, looks similar to how Sonnet would do it. And yeah, this part also, the pricing section looks similar. So that's, I would say, a little bit better than Sonnet. But this is, this one's crazy. I've never seen a design in this style by uh, done by any other model before. So let's preview this. Okay. Yeah, this is really, this is pretty next level. Um, and this looks really nice. Like artistic, like we asked for. Okay, there's a little error here with the, the, um, text being the wrong way around, but uh, we can actually fix that. Let's see if we can just easily fix that. Um, the text in the side bar is upside down. Uh, fix it. That should fix it. And in the meantime, let's, I want to try generating another SAS uh, type landing page. Um, we'll just use a simpler prompt. Um, just create a beautiful SaaS landing page and see if it does better. Okay, it um, fixed this one. So that was an easy fix. And then let's have a look at this new generation here. So this was the one with the simpler prompt. Okay, it looks similar. Looks similar to what we saw before, but still pretty good. I like the pricing section here. Actually, let's do, let's try this. We are going to um, just generate some components now. So I have another prompt here. Let's just generate a pricing um, section component. So design a SaaS pricing table component with three tiers, feature checklist and so on. And we'll select uh, a, the component mode. I'll just generate it underneath here. Um, I will also, let's try out something a little bit different. Also a component. It will be an AI chat widget component. Okay, let's see how it does on that. And while it's generating that, what we can do on this, this website that it created is like the first page. So what we can do now 
is I'll take that as a reference. We'll essentially take the entire page as a reference and say, create another page for this website in the exact same style. It should be the second page called work. So that's the second page here. And we'll select website mode and just generate it next to this one. And then in the meantime, we can go check the component. Okay, nice. The component, the pricing section component was done. So there's a little error here with the most popular. We can quickly, let's quickly fix that. So maybe we can select the section. No, let's do global. Uh, fix the most popular text. It is misaligned right now. Okay, and here it created the nice. So it's like a it's like a chat uh, chat widget component. So that's like something that could kind of like this crisp chat here that could live here on the on the side of your application, like a support chat. That looks really nice. Um, very good design quality. Looks super clean. Um, let's see how it did with the edit here. Yeah, it fixed um, it fixed this part. Okay, nice. And this. So you can see when I actually like focus it a bit more on specific sections, just doing the sections, it can do a better job. So if you tell it to do the whole thing that like also works, but it does run into some limits, I think at some point, because it's just a lot of code to generate. So you can do it section by section and then kind of piece it together from there. That's one approach to do it. So we've done the, we've done websites, we've done components. So next, let's create some web applications. Uh, so I have a prompt here for a personal finance dashboard. Uh, let's paste the prompt here. And then we'll select, we'll select web app and generate that. And then I have another prompt for um, AI driven project manager. They would, they would probably be similar to be honest, but Let's just see how it turns out. Generate that. And at the same time, I want to test some mobile applications too. So let's use this prompt here, design a fitness tracking app. We'll switch to mobile mode, generate it here. And then we can also create a travel, travel planning app. Okay, let's see how those turn out. Okay, they're ready. Let's have a look at this one. Okay, this looks pretty good. Yeah, this is nice. Maybe we can make a light mode version too. Make the light mode version. And this one looks very nice too. Let's have a look at this in full screen. Yeah, this looks very nice with the boards here and this doesn't look AI at all anymore. And let's have a look at the mobile versions. Okay, yeah. I like the, there are these little, like this little glass morphic uh, effect here in the uh, bottom navigation bar. That's really nice. And just the overall style of it is good. And this one, the travel app um, also looks very clean. Yeah, that's great. And it made the light mode version here as well. I do like the light mode better on this one. Looks very good. Cool. So, um, Overall, design quality is really good. So let's also compare it to uh, how it looks if we switch it back to Sonnet. And I'll just compare some of them uh, using the same prompt and just generate it in uh, Sonnet. Uh, so let's take this one. This was the simple prompt. Go here, copy the prompt, and then have Design Max selected. Let's paste the prompt and select website and then we'll put that here and uh, I want to take this prompt as well to compare it I'll paste it here and put it here to compare okay let's wait for it to finish generating okay these are done generating let's check them out so this is the one that sonnet 4.5 created with this prompt and you can see the the style of of sonnet 4.5 it's um, always quite similar. So I, I've kind of like seen this style several times now, so I kind of see the patterns in it, but it looks a bit bland and boring by now. And uh, you can see that 
This one does look like with a bit more, it has a bit more character. Um, there's more detail to it. It does look a bit nicer. So yeah, Gemini is definitely a step up from Sonnet here. And I think where you can really see the, the difference is in this in these more like artistic uh, types of web pages. So here's the one that Sonnet generated. And if you go through it, you can see it's it's okay, but um, it's just, it, it looks a bit rigid and boring kind of, you know, it's just like placing text and images next to each other. Nothing really special. But um, if you look at the Gemini one, it really does have a bit more character. It does look, it does look better. Um, so I think you can really start to see the difference of the quality in these kind of more artistic styles. And um, this will probably get better if you also improve the prompts, uh, because these were relatively simple prompts. But um, yeah, from th from these you can already kind of compare it a bit. So uh, yeah, that's it. Um, I uh, hoped this video helped you a bit in, in seeing how there is a difference between the, the new Gemini 3 model and like the old state of the art. There is definitely an improvement. It's it's small. It's not like you can immediately see that it's a, it's a like next level improvement. It's an incremental improvement, but um, we're heading in the right direction. So that's awesome to see. And uh, yeah, I look forward to playing around more with this model. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.